There is a global trend, especially in functioning democracies, where the youth are taking to streets in protest of something they disagree with. Usually what they disagree with is what they don't understand. But pop culture has put such a premium on ignorance that it is now celebrated as some kind of enlightenment. Young people from JNU to Jadavpur are fighting for what they think is a noble cause. Now Bollywood bimbos have also predictably joined the bandwagon and are using the opportunity to sell their substandard products. Uh, movies that are destined to crash at the box office if they don't stir up a controversy that makes people pay for their, what can you say, glamorous mediocrity? Anyway, coming back to the point, I was trying to recall the key words used in the protests of this decade. Protests that have pushed the youth onto the streets in large numbers. Humanity, equality, social justice, end of corruption and so on. Words that evoke strong emotions and fuel the dreams of a better society, if not a perfect world. People who otherwise despise ancient Hindu tradition are often found quoting this phrase, Vasudhaiva Kutumbakam, meaning that the world is a family. Maybe because Vedas are supposed to be patriarchal or problematic or whatever, not only do these people miss the Vedantic context of this statement, they go further and politicize it so that they can deliver sermons on how nations ought to behave with each other. Like Iran and the US are in the middle of an escalating conflict situation and they think it could have all been prevented if only the evil men at the helm had the wisdom to see the world as one family. Now, I find myself unable to imagine a cure for this mass delusion that has taken hold of the youth in many countries, not just India. But I think I've found some of its underlying causes. And I believe that if these causes are articulated clearly, there is a small chance that some people will self-heal or at least become less self-destructive. So one of these causes is this faulty way of looking at the world, a kind of a cognitive error that makes individuals see the universe as a bigger version of their own friend circle from school, college, workplace or whatever. In their minds, there is the particular individual and then there is all of humanity with nothing but vacuum in between. This is a notion that modern school education drills into our heads and we spend the rest of our lives suffering its consequences. In his book, Skin in the Game, Talib frames this problem in terms of scale transformation, which is to say that a country is not a large city, a city is not a large office complex and the universe is definitely not a large family. In other words, people behave differently at different sizes of community and display selfless or collectivist traits at one optimal level, but then again become selfish or individualistic once the size of the community becomes too large. We've all noticed how villagers, uh, they tend to be more trusting, friendly and open than urban folks. It is a direct result of the size of the respective communities they are a part of. So what really happens when the size of the community grows too big? It forces people to think of other individuals in the abstract because there are only a few individuals who can become an integral part of your life, those in your inner circle. As the number of people outside this little circle grows, the abstract tends to dominate your mind space, leaving very little room for real flesh and blood people. As a result, you run a high risk of losing touch with reality and believing in flying unicorns and a world without borders. Now that I've explained why borders are not a grand conspiracy, but a natural expression of the limits of human cognition, it is also important to point out how borders are mentally created. The process is derisively called othering by the social science PhD types, and it is projected as a vice of some kind. But the truth is that othering is a psychological imperative without which you cannot function in the world. Even die-hard liberals indulge in othering when they abuse those who do not buy into their grand delusion of creating a world without borders. As liberals are just simpletons, their method of othering is simplistic. But people with more evolved brains often work out more complex criteria of othering. They lay down an agenda for collective progress. They agree on a, on a code of conduct. They live together over a time span extending thousands of years and let the code evolve over time. This code is called culture.
So when liberals make fun of Bharatiya culture, for instance, they're not actually offering a better alternative to the ideas that have survived and obviously evolved over thousands of years. They're just acting out their delusions. Remember that we are inheritors of knowledge systems whose worth has been validated by history. These are potent ideas that have worked, which is why they've survived. Someone who wants to give up these ideas at the altar of modernity is either a lunatic or a communist. Same thing actually, no? All I want to say is that the next time someone accuses you of being communal and questions you for categorizing or othering people on the basis of religion or nationality, ask them for the alternative framework that they are offering. And if they use words like humanity and world peace, don't waste any more time with them. These people are what are called useful idiots, directionless zombies who end up being used as Trojan horses by your own enemies. Who are your enemies? Those people who have othered you without your consent because their religion asks them to. Ah, religion. So I hear that you are spiritual but not religious? Atheist? Well, regardless of whether you actively practice Hinduism or not, it happens to be the source of the most fundamental values that you live by. Because it is deeply embedded in the culture of this land, in its very soil, even in your favorite unread book, The Constitution of India. People who ask you to discard your religious identity for abstract notions like secularism are basically asking you to give up your moral compass. They are inviting you to become disoriented like them. So that you may also end up as useful idiots who dream of the world as a family while destroying the same civilization that actually gave birth to the idea of the world as a family, in a totally different context, of course.